A really warm welcome to your Innovating Minds webinar, where we are going to have a look at and think about how babies and children are impacted by living with and living through and being victims of domestic abuse and violence. And most importantly, as a professional, that practitioner in their lives, what can you do to support them? So I've got a few slides to share with you. Let me just bring them up just to give us a focus or give me a focus, definitely. <laughs> so I don't go off at too much of a tangent. So super, super important that when we're working with babies and with very young children, that we, we start really thinking about this. Now, you may have been working with babies and children who've been impacted by domestic abuse and violence for a long, long time. Or it might be something that's just coming onto your radar, or you may never have even thought about it, which, you know, is not unusual, I promise. So for yourselves, because you are always the most important part of this, talking about and thinking about domestic abuse and violence in any way shape or form may even surprisingly for you start to feel a bit uncomfortable a bit stressful a bit something you don't even have a word to describe so maybe this is not the day to watch this webinar maybe you just need to pause it and just go do something that you're aware of that just makes your whole body and your brain just feel a bit more settled and a bit safer. For some people, that's hmm, taking some breath down into their body, but that doesn't work for everyone. It may be that just, you know, putting your hands on top of your head again might not work for everyone and just rocking a little bit that that just settles you settles your system back down again <sighs> and you do want to carry on watching the webinar so do what works for you please 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 very important so who am i well <laughs> jane evans i began my career working with children in a preschool my son was three, he's now 32, so it was a long, long time ago. Uh, and there I was amongst all these amazing babies and children, but not really knowing, definitely not knowing anything about domestic abuse and violence or trauma or anything. So once upon a time, I, I may have been you. And I went on this huge learning journey, which I'm sure you're on yourselves at the moment and worked for many, many years with very young children, then with whole families, sometimes uh, with teenagers. So in organisations that were supporting them when they were experiencing or had experienced domestic abuse and violence, or they were in a safeguarding situation, so working in child protective services, working as a childminder, being a respite foster carer. So many, many different roles where I was always learning, learning, learning. In the last few years, well, quite a few years now, I've been uh, working more as a speaker, as a trainer and as a coach. And I've had the amazing opportunity to write and get published my four books that you can see on the screen here, all aimed at early years. So using what I've learned from the children, using what I've learned from studying about early childhood trauma and putting it into very practical books for people like yourself. I've also had the incredible opportunity in the last few years to work with Innovating Minds, which has then made it possible to work particularly closely with the whole team, but with Dr. Ash Patel, so that we can create programs training and resources for people like yourselves so enough about me let's get to you and your work so whatever i'm talking about in this webinar with you just know that nothing matters as much as safeguarding 
So that's always the priority. And um, what I learned, certainly, you know, on my career in, during, especially in the early parts of my career, is it can be confusing, particularly with things like domestic abuse and violence, where we're not even always completely sure what a child is experiencing. And even though we have contact with their safe parent, we're also not completely certain about what's going on. So I always recommend having somewhere very easily to hand all the support services around you, maybe local ones in your county. Who do you talk to? Who do you go to for some advice to just talk things through? Very, very important indeed. So knowing that any any baby who is born into, so even in the womb and then born into any level of domestic abuse or violence, they can't intellectually understand it, but they feel the tension, they feel the stress, they feel what's going on in the environment around them. But of course, they can make no sense of it at all. As an adult, you know, myself, I, I live with domestic abuse and violence in my adult life quite a lot. You, you don't even know necessarily that that's what it is. So of course, babies, young children, no idea. But they do pick up this kind of wariness and fear that definitely happens. And again, you know, you being the people directly working with the babies and the children, you may be super aware of this, or maybe not so, which, you know, that's why we're here. So what we support professionals to do and whole settings to do, because working with young children and babies is, is so, so different, is to really take an approach that's not about that child or those children. Because as you will know, working with such young young beings means that you're, you're really going to struggle to know much of the time whether they are living with domestic abuse and violence. Now, of course, you're still following all your safeguarding processes, but you know it's just to know that that, that may be a possibility because the children can't tell us. This is where having a whole setting approach is so important. So if we create environments where babies and children are and the adults in it take this very compassionately curious approach and understanding to every single child and baby, then that's already doing something very, very important that they all need. And for a child and a baby, everything that they're experiencing, particularly in the first six years of life, has an enormous impact on them. It can't not have an impact. The fact that, again, they can't tell us doesn't mean it's not all going on you know in the background of it, it is now why is that well their brain waves how their brain is operating and again you will know this very very well if you work in early years it works it works in a much slower system so a, so a lower energy and that's very clever because it means that they're on this huge learning curve when they're young, ginormous, which never stops. It never stops until the day we die. But when children and babies are very, very young, it's just all the information is coming in. Everything, everything is coming in. So everything matters. And it has a very, very lasting impact. So you may not see the biggest impact that a baby or a child is having from living with or having lived with domestic abuse and violence, that may become more and more apparent as they get older, or it might be really clear already in your settings. I used to work in domestic abuse services, and part of my role was often to support parents who were living in refuge 
to get their their young children and their babies settled in the local preschool, the local nursery. And I know the huge difference it made to those children and their parents if professionals understood that on some level, this baby, this young child has experienced things that were terrifying to it. And that, that if we all start from that, that point of curiosity that we don't know what that's going to look like how it's going to show up in daily life but we just bring this compassion and understanding so for our youngest children and our babies as I said they can't tell us anything about what has happened and what is happening to them it's very unusual for children at all of any age all the way through up to adulthood to necessarily talk about anything that's going on in the home it's you know it seems strange but it's often there's this huge secrecy which comes from fear and being told don't you dare you know tell anyone about this or if you use breathe the word of this or children just pick up also the signals that you know this is not something we speak about or of course they don't know that this isn't normal so for yourselves uh this makes it makes it hard because all they can do is show it automatically without they're not intending to show you but things just happen really really quickly they react in the moment so through their behaviors through their emotions that's how they're showing what is going on inside of them and what they are experiencing or what they have experienced but of course without any background knowledge of this it's often really hard as the adults in their life to whew, just press pause and not go towards defining their behavior as bad or difficult or challenging or all those words that get thrown around all of the time if we're able to just just steady ourselves and have that extra curiosity, that is so helpful to every baby and every child. And also, you know, with a huge amount of compassion, babies and children, if they can get along with adults and, you know, as much as their development will allow, be fairly comfortable with other children around them, then they will. If they're st really struggling with this in ways that, you know, stand out to you, it's because they are struggling. It's not because they want to be or feel this way. So it's, you know, it's easy. And I am, I'm very sure that I've done this through, you know, in my career, especially before I knew anything about early childhood trauma, is I might have spoken to a young child as uh, you know saying well what's going on you know <laughs> why why did you push so and so or um why did you uh, you know you were asked to do da, 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 and I, I would have done exactly what you see in the image here now I would know that oh okay there's a little sign from this child here that for whatever reason and it isn't necessarily because they're experiencing fear and tension and unpredictability at home it's just because they are children <laughs> and you know they very quickly go out of feeling calm and safe into feeling panicked scared overexcited all of those kind of things but what they can't do is explain it back to us they don't know why they did what they did they sometimes learn phrases to tell us but they don't they don't benefit from us asking these kind of questions what they do benefit from is us whew, just steadying ourselves a bit and then really caring about how they're feeling again not to get a direct answer from them but if we treat all babies and all children in this hugely compassionate way and are able to always reach for wow this is a this is a baby this is a child who for whatever reason at the moment they they felt a big burst of something might have been fear might have been over excitement who knows and that's where the behavior that we see has come from super helpful not always easy to do i know so what are these babies and these children experiencing if they either have lived with domestic abuse and violence or they are still at the moment so as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, they they pick up on the tension in the adults around them and the atmosphere. If you've ever 
walked into a room or somewhere you know maybe even work and straight away you feel like whoa something <laughs> something is not okay here somebody is hmm maybe feeling very angry maybe stressed very anxious well we pick up on it as adults but children and babies it's super super sensitive to this so if they're living with this all of the time and then there are particular things that happen sometimes on a daily basis sometimes you know not every single day but there's still the tension there but you know maybe there's a a mealtime thing where an abuser chooses to fling the food at the wall or um force a child to eat stuff that they they really hate or whatever it is then all of that information about how frightening and distressing and horrible that was every single part of it is stored in child inside that developing baby and child so they don't know it's stored in them but it is so everything they live with everything they don't live with there's a there's a stored sensory memory of it inside of them which again isn't easy for them because they can't explain things they can't explain, oh, the reason why uh, when you have a big display of something on the wall, um, you know, big images of hearts because it's Valentine's Day or something. Well, the reason that, you know, I've been extra all over the place this week since that that uh, display went up is because this happened on one Valentine's. And, you know, of course, they can't do that. Most of us as adults, we would still struggle. But the information is stored inside them so now for the rest of their lives unless they do very specific work around this anything anything at all that that so you know seeing a picture like this behind me with a red heart in that without them having any clue at all they could be 18 see that image and suddenly they start re-experiencing all the terror or the fear everything that happened when they were two so this is why it's so hard for yourselves, <laughs> because in this moment that they're with you in this lovely setting where you're so kind and you really, really care about them. The fact that they've just pushed another child over, screamed in your face or whatever it is, it doesn't make any sense. And that is the hard bit. That's the hard bit for you and the hard bit for them. And, you know, it, it can be very uh, draining as a as a professional in their lives who super cares about them and wants the best for them and you know day after day you're seeing what you're seeing this this little distressed one here however hard you try some days you know they can be soothed a bit more easily other days really not at all I mean that obviously is is a sign for all of us then to be a bit more curious about safeguarding but it's these kind of things or it might be when transitions happen in your setting that they get very, very distressed or they start, you know, flying about the place or they might wet themselves when they come in first thing in the morning, that there are so many ways and so many signs. And, you know, the best that we can all do is have that extended curiosity. If something in you is going, hmm, then have that conversation with your supervisor, have, have a conversation with someone and be extra, extra calming, extra compassionate that day and get support for yourselves because this is hard. This is really, really hard. Again, safeguarding always at the, the top of it all. So why sometimes, despite everything that you do, you're there, you're being the calmest, kindest, most patient, you know, you couldn't be doing more. And yet this this little one, this baby, they they don't seem to be able to be soothed by anything that you're doing. Now, that doesn't mean that you are doing anything wrong. Far from it. It's just that very often, if not always, I would say, when a child or a baby is living with domestic abuse or has done, their safe parent is maybe not allowed to pick them up is not allowed to soothe them when they're upset, is not allowed to hold them because the abuser decides what can and can't happen. 
which if you've never experienced domestic abuse might sound unbelievable. But it's again, it's sadly, it's something very, very common. And it can be done in all kinds of ways that if you if you and your children are victims of domestic abuse, you don't really realize that it's happening. So it's not that you, this lovely, kind person who's with them now are failing, although it may feel that way. It's just that this child, this baby hasn't gone that natural route often enough of feeling scared, feeling overwhelmed, feeling sad, whatever it is, having a safe, soothing adult and then feeling OK again. So just be aware of that for yourselves as well. So for a baby and a child, you know, it takes very, very, very little to scare them. Really tiny, tiny. You know, I, I have a, a granddaughter now and I've been watching her since she was born. So she's heading up for three now. And you can see the tiny dots of droplets of anything that just bring that quick change in her feeling calm, safe and relaxed to not. It can be really anything. And that's as nature intends. Nature intends because babies and young children particularly are so vulnerable that they quickly react to any changes around them. So, you know, if they are living in a home where adults are shouting and yelling at each other and or them, which often the two go together, there's just this kind of oh, tension in the adults, which there certainly will be, particularly in the, the adult and the other children who are victims, as well as the child that you're caring for and this lack of what I was just talking about this one adult who I mean two would be great two is you know the optimum actually four is the optimum but two in the home the adults just see them soothe them as often as they can but when that isn't happening it creates a lot of stress and anxiety in the baby and the child and when you live with domestic abuse and, and violence as an adult, you are, it's really hard to focus in on your children because you have to keep focusing in on the abuser, trying to avoid things happening, which of course, as a victim, you know, you can't, you can't. That's the whole point of abusers. They they choose their moments, but you are very preoccupied with trying to work out ways to keep them happier say that heavily with commas around it because it again it's not possible it's part of the abuse but it does mean it's very hard to be present with your children emotionally present and this unpredictability this ongoing tension and fear it has a huge impact on any child at all how couldn't it I guess is the question we should be asking but again, thinking about yourselves and what you're there to do and how you're wishing to support the children, it isn't easy and it's not always clear what they have or haven't had in their lives. So it isn't necessarily a thought that immediately pops into her into our heads that this this. 18 month old that you know we're being very kind to we're rocking them they they keep pushing us away and screaming and you know that we start to feel defeated maybe a bit irritated or whatever it is overwhelmed very very normal that really what they're showing is their fear their fear their fear they can't tell you about it they can't tell you how they feel they can't help you understand which is why when everyone in a setting all are singing off the same page that okay with every baby with every child we automatically what we're all about is being calm and being kind and being compassionate then you can't go too wrong if you have other ways of you know looking at children and their behavior maybe trying to manage it with systems and stuff like that it just adds to their stress their their fear and all the rest of it and it will ultimately add to your stress too so knowing that all all that happens to around and about a child is is stored inside of them then the thing that really, really is going to matter when they're with you is that they do have experiences of adults who feel 
different, who feel calmer, who feel safer. Now, again, they're not going to be able to say that to you. Gosh, you feel very calm and safe to be around. But if we choose to work with children and babies, I mean, I very much include myself with this, then we need to make this a priority that we are checking in. You know, we arrive in the morning, you know, some of you might have had to get four children up, dressed, fed somewhere on time you know more than that maybe I and mean, when I was a child mind I sometimes I had six or seven although I hadn't had to get them out of bed <laughs> or dressed so I cannot claim to that but you know getting everyone out the door where they had to be on time and then you arrive where you need to arrive so it's not easy to just automatically be calm it's something to work towards which you know as a setting make that a priority they can really sense how you feel about them so if you in some way are a bit activated by the emotions or the behaviors of a child then we can easily fall into you know feeling irritated by them even you know not really enjoying that much being around them gosh they really feel that again they can't rationally understand it but they can feel it and of course, if they've had that at home as well, and then they come into this one place where it could be different, it's something we need to focus on. Things like tone of voice, very, very important. So it's, you know, I'm again, I'm sure I have been this professional in settings where, you know, it gets to tidy up time and it's like, OK, everyone, it's tidy up time and, da, 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 and the energy shifts or it's snack time or it's you know, whatever time it is, and suddenly there's a shift in your energy and your tone of voice and it blah, 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 goes high or goes low or whatever it is. Those two, all humans, um, immediately, they're meant to make us go a change in tone of voice, but particularly babies and children, and particularly babies and children who live in homes where their systems don't feel very safe. So tone of voice is a really important one to start thinking about. Also, facial expressions, you know, if we are frowning a lot and we're got tight, you know, we're feeling irritated, which is very normal, you know, or we, we feel all our feelings. But then again, realizing it and just changing, changing our expression, changing our tone of voice. So important for all children, but particularly children who aren't feeling safe at home. Being able to be really focused as much as you can humanly manage on the child in front of you, the children, the babies. Now, again, I, I know that this is this is often very, very hard. Hours are very long in many, many earlier settings. And it's, you know, I would honestly hand on my heart say it's one of the most draining jobs I, I ever did um, as a childminder and working in settings as well. So it's difficult sometimes to be in the moment with them, be present with them. But again, when the whole setting focuses on this, then it becomes more possible. Predictability. So they children generally don't do well when the adults around them are unpredictable. So one moment they're calm and they're kind and then suddenly they get to, what, what are you doing that? You know, and it all kind of shifts. That's going to always fire a lot of anxiety through any child, any baby, but particularly children who live in these in these homes where they just don't feel relaxed and safe. They really need us to bring, always bring compassion and gentleness. You know, I often say, I, I don't care what a child has or hasn't done. Am I going to tend to them and the, the child or other children who have been hurt? Oh, yes, of course, with much gentleness and much compassion. But the child who did the thing is going to get an equal amount as the child or children who may have been hurt. So if we if we have that as our, you know, like top standard that all children are always treated with compassion and gentleness, then we can't go too wrong. And then going at the children's pace, if you can see a child is really, really struggling at certain times of the day or with certain activities or, you know, trying to, to jolly them through them and, you know, whatever it is, it, it, they're showing you that this this is not working for me. 
And again, you're in this really tricky position of not knowing why. So just come back to compassion, gentleness, for whatever reason, this is feeling really hard for them. It might be the smell of the food that somehow flicked some big fear reaction in them. We don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. So the super good news always is that you, 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 you are honestly the, the best news ever. Because if you can make focusing on your inside state, then you start to give them these little moments of feeling what a safe adult sounds like, looks like, feels like, is like to be around which is an amazing gift that you're giving them and something they vitally need. So thinking about this whole setting approach, this is the key. As I said, you you know, because in early years, it's, it's extra, I feel extra complicated to know what a child is experiencing unless they're under safeguarding and maybe you've got some information, but so much of the time you, you won't know. So to take for every child, for every adult you have contact for yourselves, this trauma sensitive approach, being focusing on being this calm, kind, compassionate adult. So they get this experience of what that feels like and safety so that maybe and it will often take a long, long, long time. Eventually, one day they can start to feel a little bit safer because they're with you. So this is every baby, every child needs this, but particularly children who have experienced or are experiencing any level at all of domestic abuse and violence. So you have the opportunity to give them this, oh, this, this space, these people who just feel and predictably are safe. What an amazing opportunity. So we know at Innovating Minds that you are the key. You are the key. You are the people that are going next to their safe parent and maybe any other safe adults they have in their life matter the most. So we have created very specific training and resources and support for early years professionals because, you know, we know that often this gets missed out for yourselves. And yet there you are at the very beginning of their lives and beginning of their stories where it matters most. So we've created this training. It, it gives you the ability then in your setting to have a much more trauma sensitive approach and understanding for all children, but particularly for and with babies and children who have or are experiencing domestic abuse and violence. So please take a moment to, you know, maybe take a photograph of the screen now so that you can go check out our website. The information will be there for you. We are a very friendly, friendly team at Innovating Minds. I don't say that lightly. And we love to support you on your journey. So if you have any questions, you want to just have a quick chat with somebody, please drop us an email. It's never going to be a bother to us. We love talking to people like yourselves because we know that you, you are the people who are there in the children's lives. So just some insights there and you know bought with much compassion for yourselves because as I said at the beginning as someone who spent many years working with very very young children it's this this is the most important part of their lives of course all of their lives matter but you're in at the part where their brains and their body systems are still really really rapidly developing of course they'll be developing the whole of their lives but this part where you are is the key part, which means you are the key people. So take care of yourselves.